All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, excited to be with you. Um, let's see, it looks like my camera is not very happy right now. Let's get that fixed real quick. Um, whoops, wrong way. Let's go to six, there we go. Um, hopefully you can see me better now. Um, thanks for being with us. Um, today we're gonna be talking about burr versus flips. Um, so what you're gonna learn today by walking away um, by the end of, of spending this time together, you're going to learn what is a burr, what is a flip, what is the difference between the two, when you should use one versus the other, which one is best for you based upon your circumstances. So um, there's a ton of content we're going to be going through today. So <coughs> excuse me, the show's for entertainment purposes only before you make any financial moves. Consult with real estate professionals, attorneys, CPAs, or other professionals who's an expert in the subject matter. Everybody's situation is different, and there's not one size fits all approach or guarantee to work for all investors. DHM may receive payment for sponsorships, guests in the form of books, giveaways, items, discounts, or other remediations. As with anything in life, results come from education, following a system, hard work, and determination to follow through until the end. Welcome, welcome. Please give us your first name and the city and state you're investing in. Um, it looks like Antoine, Antoine, in, how do I say that right? Antoine. Wyan, Antwian, um, appreciate you being with us today. Appreciate the uh, the muscle sign. I like that. Uh, so uh, if you're here, please uh, make yourself known. Let us know where you're investing and what your name is. Um, if you're watching these uh, in the recording, please join us live um, every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are here and we are ready to go. Um, okay, who we got here? Anton from Holland, Indianapolis. Thanks for being here. Um, Dallas, Texas. Uh, appreciate you being here with us. Free swag. Uh, today we're giving away some free swag like we do every week or most weeks. Um, here's what we're giving away. So um, the at the end of today's, we've already decided who this winner is. So this is from last week. Um, that we're sending you a Do Hard Money hat. We're sending you the Financial uh, Freedom uh, DVD, CD, USB workbook. So all that's coming your way. Let me put all that back here. I don't know how well you can see this. Um, yeah, the lighting's a little bad on that. Uh, so we got that. We've got a Do Hard Money sports bottle. We've got a, a gripper for the hands. We've got a stretcher for exercise. It's that time of year. It's cooling off. Um, we've got a, a thermos thing. Um, we've got another um, Do Hard Money squishy house. We've got a uh, wristband, and we've got a Do Hard Money shirt coming your way. Um, so we got all this fun stuff coming your way. So we're going to announce the winner of this one at the end. Now for this week's, here's what we got for this week's. Um, let me grab this. Ah. Okay, for this week's, we're giving away. Um, we've got a uh, killer do hard money. Where is where, ah? There's the do hard money. We got a killer do hard money backpack that we're going to be sending out. We've got another. Um, house. I probably shouldn't put on this on the keyboard. Something could go wrong. Um, we've got another insulated uh, little thermos thing. We've got these are my favorite. The little ice pack. Um, whoops. Maybe there. Um, you can put the your ice in those old school. And we've got another financial freedom uh, work uh, work up. We've got another stretchy thing, a jump rope. A, um, we've got another stretchy house. So we've got all this fun stuff as well. That's what we're going to be giving away for this week. Um, we'll be announcing the winner from last week at the end today. Let's throw this over. Um, so we got a lot of good stuff going on. If you are interested in some of this free swag, let's talk about it. Um, we announced the winner at the end. It, do you want free swag? If so, make a comment and let me know. Uh, looks like we got a few comments here. Um, we got Eric here from Boston, Massachusetts. Eric, are you a Red Sox fan? I just need to know that um, because I went to a couple Red Sox games and uh, when I was back there doing a, doing a class at MIT, and I think that Red Sox fans are amazing. So I've adopted it, and my boys actually have Red Sox gear. So I need to know. Uh, let's see here. Who else we got here that just checked in? Um, we talked about that. Um, 
Anthony from South Carolina. Anthony, thanks for being with us. I think you've been with us the last few weeks. I really appreciate it. Uh, Anthony, did you get your swag back? Oh, awesome. It's on its way. Uh, Anthony, is it possible to win back too because you have cool stuff up for grabs? I don't know, Anthony. Let me think about it. Uh, Moniz, yes. Uh, where are you at? Where are you investing? Um, Let's see. Yes, sir. I got an Antoine. I'm saying your name wrong, and it's bothering me because I don't know. Uh, Eric's a Celtics fan. Oh, I can't. Uh, no, I can't do the Celtics. I'm a hardcore jazz fan. Um, and Gordon Hayward got stolen from us, Eric. I can't. I can't live with that. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Here we go. Hi, monies. You're entered to win some swag. All right. I appreciate it. Okay. Who else wants some swag? Put your information in. Here's what you got to do. We're looking for people asking great questions. So, you know, if we're talking about this burr versus flip, put put some questions in there. I want to get those answered for you. We're also looking for positive comments. Um, if making positive comments here on the chat as we're going through the live, but also want to see some live comments on the recorded video, like on the YouTube. Um, comments on the recorded YouTube video. Eric, I just saw your comment. It's cracking me up. Um, and high interaction. I will choose one person at the end uh, and we'll announce that next week. Uh, I'm, I'm laughing because I told Eric that I'm a... a a jazz fan, and they sold Gordon Hayward from us, and Eric's like, you can have him back. Yeah, we don't want him anymore. <laughs> okay, Antoine, Antoine. Okay, I got it. I can handle that. Antoine. Um, I, hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, I appreciate the comments, guys. Keep them coming. Um, here's some from last week. Uh, Dawa said, I just subscribed, and I'm a new member of Do Hard Money as well. Thanks for being a member. I really appreciate it. For those of you who haven't checked us out, you may want to check us out for our membership. We offer some really cool stuff. Um, Choke Lewis, I just subscribed. Essential Flips on board. Awesome. Excited for you to uh, to be with us and excited for your subscribing. Um, let's see here. What do we got? Antoine. Yep, I, I'm saying it right. I like it. Um, Brian um, from Woodstown, New Jersey is in the house. Thanks for being with us, Brian. Excited for you to be here. If you guys like these live casts and you want to see them continue, I really need your help. Okay. A couple of things here. Um, we are at 4,310 subscribers. 4,310 subscribers on YouTube. My goal by the end of October is to get 4,340. Um, so we are 30 subscribers shy. So if you're listening right now on the live or on the recorded video, if you're not currently a subscriber to Do Hard Money on YouTube, I really want to uh, ask your help for this. We update videos every single day. So here's a video about measuring risk and if multifamily is a good investment. They're short, under five-minute videos that answer specific questions that you may be having. Um, so please click the thumbs up as you watch the videos. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn on the bell. You click on the bell. It'll give you notifications when we come out with new videos. And please make a comment on the recorded videos. It makes a big difference. These take so much work uh, to put the content together, to put the film together. It takes so much. Uh, and if you tell somebody else about it, that would be great. So here's what I want to know. If you're not currently a subscriber, please subscribe and put in the comments, I just subscribed. Um, that would be fantastic. Uh, before I do that, we got a couple of comments. Okay, I just got on board also. Moniz is on board. Uh, Moniz, where are you investing? Yes, you want to win some swag. Moniz, are you saying you just got on board? Are you a new member for us or you just subscribed? Or um, let me know. Want to, want to know more. Uh, real estate market update. Let's jump into this, guys. Um, rising home prices are keeping prospective buyers out of home ownership, according to Yahoo Finance. Home prices usually drop in the fall, but median home prices hovering near summer highs at $350,000 last week, up 12.9% for the week ending October 3rd compared to the same time last year, according to Realtor.com. So seriously, prices are 12.9% higher than they were last year at this exact same time, which is why we're going to be talking a little bit about Burr strategy today. We're going to talk about Burr versus Flip, but the Burr strategy, you're hanging on to that. So if you owned a property that you bought for $100,000, statistically, that would be worth $12,900 more than you paid for it 
last year alone. And that's even with the pandemic. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, Moniz is a new member and investing in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you, Moniz. Appreciate you being on board. Excited to be with you. We're excited to be working with you. Uh, Brian S. Kelly just subscribed. Thanks, man. Uh, looking forward to it. You're going to love it. Uh, post your questions here. We're excited. Antoine just subscribed. Loving this. Thanks, guys. We're getting there. Um, and I think you'll really, really enjoy some of these other short video clips as well in addition to this longer form content that we do um, so thank you thanks for being our newest subscribers I really appreciate it uh, the monthly jobs report shows that September's unemployment continues to improve which is what we want to see as sectors like leisure and hospitality retail healthcare get added back with jobs together payroll rose by 661 thousand. Uh, that's what we're talking about. We're seeing that, which is awesome. Other economic data out there this week showed a bounce back in consumer confidence and higher consumer spending despite slowing household incomes and a dip in personal savings rate. These mixed indicators show the progress towards recovery persists, though the pace may be slowing. So we're seeing the recovery just slow just a little bit, um, but it's still, still getting better. Antoine, ready to get home and bored. Um, awesome. Well, yeah, we're excited to, excited to have you uh, with us as well. Uh, home prices are still at peak levels, summer levels. And for the first time in our history, September homes are on the market for less time than August. So usually what happens around September time is we start seeing time on market increase um, because you've got people back to school and those types of things. Um, okay, uh, homes are more than half a million fewer homes for sale versus the same time last year. Buyers navigate this market will need to determine and prepare in order to succeed. Ready to get on board, Antoine. Awesome. Um, although the market may be challenging for home buyers, many of these see signs of positive for sellers and overall housing recovery. In fact, all components of our housing market recovery index register above the baseline this week even the supply index which you don't see happening that frequently housing is being rock solid right now which is awesome and a great time to be an investor recently the federal housing finance administration fhfa a conservatory of fannie mae freddie mac extended the moratorium both evictions and foreclosures till the end of next year there may be an opportunity here um, if you've got access to our investors edge software you're going to want to check it out because this shows you some delinquency rates like 17 percent delinquencies all the way through here, Philadelphia, Atlanta, this is something you need to be looking forward to. Um, this could make a major difference. Uh, real estate is a seller's market right now. The current state of the housing market isn't expected to change anytime soon. It's in part due to many buyers thinking that the market wouldn't be as seller friendly as it is right now. Now, the average rate of a 30-year fixed mortgage with 0.8 points paid in fees, it uh, fell seven basis points to 2.86%. It was 3.56% last year at this time. This is crazy low interest rates, which is one of the reasons why we're talking about Burr strategy. Question for you, do you know what Burr is? If so, type it in the comments. I'd be really interested in your thoughts with that. Uh, the Fed suggests the worst of the crisis is over in their morning briefing, um, which is great according to Yahoo Finance. Um, Terra Cara is, hi, I am ready to flip. And um, yeah, we've got these cool shirts. Any of you that are involved in our offer contest, um, we're doing an October offer contest. How many offers you can do in the month of October? Um, if it's for our members, so those of you who, who do we got? That's uh, uh, so our new members. Monice is a new member uh, or a member. Um, who else do we have? That's a member that's on the call. If you're a member and you're on the call, uh, say hello. Tell me you're a member. Anyway, for those that are members, check out our October offer contest. But we've got these killer shirts uh, that say "I flip and did it." It's really cool. So um, buy, repair, rent, and refinance. That's exactly right, Brian. Um, we're going to jump into this in some detail. COVID-19 updates. Let's talk about this nationally. We're starting to see an uptick in the fall time. Hospital resources are still looking pretty good. 28,000 beds available with 3,000 in use in Texas. Major uh, that lives in Illinois, 14,000 beds in use or 17,000.
1,500 in use with 14,000 available. Uh, Anthony in South Carolina. Anthony, this one's for you, man. Um, 700 beds in use with 4,000 available. So, I mean, it's looking pretty good uh, in that regards as well. Okay, let's see here. I'm ready to flip houses. Awesome. We're going to talk about flipping and we're going to talk about burrs and the difference. That's going to be the whole thing. Hello, Rodrigo. Thanks for being with us. Excited for you to be with us. Uh, Maurice, buy, rehab, rent, and refinance and repeat. I, I dropped the repeat off because I think it's kind of stupid, but uh, it, we I just do burr, B-R-R-R, but you're, you're right, Maurice. No, I'm not trying to get you wrong. Um, okay, who we got here? Hi, Carla. Check it in. Carla, thanks for being with us. Uh, let us know if uh, where you're investing. That'd be great. Um, the NPR reports, could the live flu vaccination help you fight off COVID-19? And they say it is. At least 41 COVID-19 vaccinations are in human trials worldwide, but only U.S. Bet candidates are in three phase or phase three, Mondera, Pfizer, I don't even know how to say, Astrazeneca, and Johnson and Johnson, which is which is great. Um, let's see here. Maurice is in Chicago. Thanks for being with us, Maurice. Um, Anthony, yes, I'm ready to flip. I'm a member and I want burr rather than flipping. That's awesome. Anthony, we're going to get into this. We're going to deep dive this. Um, repairing to Maurice. Okay, yeah, yeah. Trina here. Awesome. Trina, thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you for helping, Carla. Anytime we are here, um, we're here to help you. Uh, Therese, thanks for being here as well. Appreciate it. New York Times, Johnson & Johnson plans to enroll 60,000 more participants in its phase three trials. The new CDC report says 94% of patients who died from COVID had other health issues. I think that's really interesting. As we see the cases uh, climbing up in a lot of places, uh, the big thing that we're seeing here is cases are climbing, but deaths are going down, um, which is what we like to see. Best bet to beat COVID-19 this fall is going to be flu shots, according to uh, reports. Uh, COVID-19 top science stories of the week from single family shot vaccination results to asymptomatic spreads. Immune reaction to some common colds might prove protection against COVID-19. Lasting immunity seen after mild COVID-19 infection reported. Uh, New York Times, what if herd immunity is closer than scientists actually think? To achieve so-called herd immunity, the point at which the virus can no longer spread wildly because there's not enough vulnerable humans. Scientists have suggested that perhaps 70% of a given population must be immune through vaccination or because they survive the infection. Um, the new model puts a threshold of herd immunity at 43%. That is, the virus cannot hang on in a community after the percentage of residents has been infected and recovered. Um, U.S. lists advisory against all international travel. Kids are less susceptible to catching and spreading the coronavirus than adults are. As a matter of fact, 5.2% uh, chance of getting the virus if they live with someone that has it. Also, if you're between ages of 20 to 50, you have a 14.8% risk if you live with someone that has the virus. And those over 60 have an 18.4% chance of getting it if they live with somebody that has the virus. And this is really important. I don't know if you would have more, I don't know where you'll find more contact than if you actually live with someone that has the virus. Um, but if you live with somebody that has the virus and you're over the age of 60, you have an 18.4% risk of actually getting it. Uh, so, I mean, great stuff, great stuff that's going on here. Um, you know, with in the world of real estate, um, what are your thoughts? I've got a couple of comments here I need to, uh, thanks for being here, okay, we got that. Do hard money, let's go, I love it, um, fantastic. Okay, we're gonna jump into this whole burr versus flip. So as you have questions, put them in the comments so I can get those answered. I'm gonna go through a lot of content and then we'll get answer a bunch of these questions along the way here. But I gotta get a drink of water because I'm, my throat's getting dry. All right, who's ready to rock and roll? Let's do this. Okay, today we're going to be talking about burr versus flip. What you're going to learn today, by the time we leave each other, you're going to learn what is a burr, what is a flip, what is the difference between the two of them, when you should use one versus the other. When should you burr a property? When should you flip a property? What's the differences? When does it make sense? And which one is best for you based upon your personal circumstances? Okay. So first off, what is a burr? 
A BRRRR is an acronym for buy, rehab, rent, and refinance, okay? That's, it's a whole acronym. The idea with BRRRR is to get most or all of your cash out of it. That's the beautiful thing with BRRRR is how can I do a zero down rental property or as close to a zero down rental property as I possibly can and BRRRR is the strategy to do that if you do it correctly, okay? So BRRRR, you buy the property. You get a loan from a hard money lender for the purchase and for the rehab, okay? That's what you're trying to do. Can you get me the purchase? Can you get me the rehab? You have very little cash into this deal. You then improve the property with the rehab money from the hard money lender. And then you get an 80% rate and term refinance loan. You already own the property. You're refinancing the property. If you can get that at 80%, you should be able to pay off the hard money lender's fees, costs, the purchase, and the rehab and you have very little to no money into this deal. Um, and that's the whole thing. If you can get a hard money lender to give you the purchase and the rehab, if you buy the property right with the purchase, the rehab, the loan origination, the loan fees, the interest, the closing costs, if you can have all of those things rolled in and keep that under that 80% at the time that you go to do that refinance, you're probably going to be able to make this happen with little to no money, which is exactly what you wanna do with a bird deal because it gives you the ability to leverage, okay? You've gotta be 80% or less and you have to find a lender that only has three to six months seasoning requirements, okay? That means the amount of time that you've owned the property. Seasoning is how long, how long you've owned the property. If you buy the property, you do the fix up, it'll probably take you three months to do that. Maybe it takes you another month to put a tenant in there, but somewhere around month three to six, you're gonna be ready for that takeout financing. So you've gotta make sure that you've found a lender that doesn't have seasoning requirements, or maybe at most they only have six month seasoning requirements, uh, meaning you have had to have owned the property for six months before the lender will give you that loan. And you can do this with little to no money down with real estate rentals. This is amazing. Um, the question is, should you do this, right? Should you do that? And the answer for me is maybe. Um, let's look at the alternative. Again, so that Burr concept is, I want to buy the property with little to no money. I want to fix the property up. I wanna refinance that property with little to no money. Cause keep in mind, rentals appreciate in value. Um, we've seen this last year, since last October to this October, values have gone up 12.9 or 12.6%, right? So we're seeing values go up. There's also benefits where the tenant pays down the loan. You've got the loan amortization paying down the loan. You've got some tax benefits. You've got some appreciation. And if you do it right, you should have some cash flow. And especially if you're doing a bird type situation, you have very little money into it. So anything you make in cash flow is m putting money into your pocket. And if you hold on to the property long enough, you'll see that property eventually get close to being paid off or pay off the property. So now what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is flip. What is a flip? Okay, a flip is buying the property and selling it, either wholesaling it, right? You can wholesale or you can buy, fix up and resell, meaning retail, okay? Wholesale means that you have a property and at the point you can make money and the person you sell it to can make money if there's not enough meat on the bone, it does not work. So if you're wholesaling a deal, you've got to make a little more money and the person you sell it to also has to be able to make money. If the person you're selling it to can't make money by rehabbing it and flipping it or by turning it into a rental property themselves, if they can't do that, then you're not going to be able to make a wholesale deal. Okay, that's really what it comes down to. You've got to have somebody that's going to be able to do that wholesale deal and they have to be able to make money. The idea of the wholesale is you're selling it at a wholesale price. Wholesale meaning less than retail. If I want to buy wholesale, I go to Sam's Club and I can buy a, a thing of water bottles and I can buy the whole thing for five bucks. But if I go over to the 7-Eleven, I'm going to pay two bucks for one bottle of water. That's kind of a difference between wholesale and retail. Okay. Um, now, one of the things as we're talking about the bird that I want to get back to is if you're going to bird the deal, I think it's really important to talk to a lender and I 
identify a lender that will do the loan for you um, and doesn't have the seizing any requirements, right? And um, if you're doing one of those types of deals with us, we're going to want to make sure you've got a lender lined up that's got you pre-approved that says, yes, we can do the takeout financing. And yes, um, within six months, you know, no more than six months seasoning. And you need want to know the payments are and what it's going to look like so that you can run your analysis to make sure it's going to be profitable on a rental type situation. So, um, but on this flip side of it, the whole idea here is you want to be uh, making it, you can do a wholesale or you can do a fix and flip, which is a retail. Retail, this means you're selling it for full price, not a discount. When you're wholesaling a property, you're selling it for less than that property's worth because you're passing that on to the new buyer. That new buyer is getting a property without having to do the work you are getting paid to not have to take on some risk and because you found the property, but retail is you're selling it for full price. To do this, you typically are selling to a homeowner that is getting an FHA loan, federal housing loan, right? An FHA loan from the Federal Housing Administration, that's going to get you the highest price out of it. But to do that, the property has to be in good condition. If you're gonna wholesale a property, you don't have to have it in good condition. You can have it in really crappy condition and somebody will end up going and purchasing that property. So the question really is, is when should you use one versus the other? Meaning, when should I wholesale? When should I fix and flip? Or when should I do a burr? Okay. When should I do that burr type situation? And let's look at some of the pros and cons on both of these. Um, there's pros and there's some cons. There's some pros to fix and flips. Let's talk about those. You can make a lot of money fast with a fix and flip. I think our average customer makes like $36,000 when they do a fix and flip if they do it right. Um, you can make more money on one flip than most me people make in a year. We've had people make 50 or even $70,000 on a flip. But let's say the average flip is nets $40,000. It doesn't take long for that $40,000 per fix and flip to really start adding up to make some serious profits when you're doing fix and flips, especially if you're keeping a day job as well. Okay. You, you have to be able to manage. Here's some cons to the fix and flips. You have to be able to manage your general contractors. And for some people, that is, well, some people, for everyone, that is a chore to manage your general contractors. It's called being a project manager. You have to have attention to detail. You have to make sure that they do the right things. You've got to have supervision on them. So time is money and they can cost you a lot of time and in turn cost you a lot of money. You have to get the work done and sold in a limited amount of time frame, or the lender can take the property. That's really important. Um, there's no tax benefits when you're doing a fix and flip. You're basically paying ordinary income taxes, right? You're paying just an ordinary income tax when you're dealing with uh, something that's in a fix and flip uh, scenario. Whereas if you do a rental, there are some tax advantages. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. So some of the pros to doing a bird type deal by rent or buy, renovate, rent, and refinance. So you keep the property and over time, top properties do appreciate it. They just do. They go up over time. We've seen that time and time again. Uh, if done right, and for the right property, you can get passive income forever, meaning you're going to spend that $40,000, but you could be getting cash flow now and for as long as your kids are alive and beyond. Um, you can get into a rental property with little to no money down. That's a big pro when it comes to a burr. The other thing is depreciation um, is, is really can be used and also accelerated depreciation can be used. Tenants also pay down your loan amortization, meaning each time the tenant makes a payment, they're paying down your loan. So if you actually count the cash flow plus the loan pay down that they're paying, you're actually getting a lot more money than you may think that you're getting when we're dealing with a burr type situation. Let's talk about some of the cons when we're, when we're dealing with the burrs. It's a lot of work to buy, fix up, and get rented for a few hundred dollars a month, right? If you do it and you get $200 a month, that's not a lot of money. Um, and so you're doing a lot of work for a very little amount of money. Um, you may not be a good landlord. Uh, this is really important because bad landlords can ruin caught, ruin your deal, ruin your profit. So uh, tenants could damage the property and you'd have to put more money into the property. Now, this is back to not being a good landlord. If you put good tenants in, you don't have that problem as much as you would. Um, and so let's talk about retail. Retail is when you purchase property, right? You fix up the property and sell it to a retail buyer with somebody getting an FHA loan. So really the question is, 
what's best for you? And the answer is, it's going to depend. And we're going to talk about why. So there's a few things. Personal preference is one. Personal financial situation is another. The numbers, right? Yeah, what's better? The property, is this property better as a fix and flip? Is this property better as a wholesale or is it better as a rental property? And then it comes down to what are you best at? Where do you shine? Do you know construction really well? So doing the fix and flip makes a lot of sense or are you scared of construction um, you know, type scenario and then you'd rather spend more money and get the right contractor in there? Those are all things. So let's talk about these just for a minute. Personal preferences. Would you rather be a landlord and get money over time or get a bunch of money all at once? That's the question. Are you good with being a project property manager, right? Those are questions we've got to look at. Can you have tough conversations? Um, your personal financial situation. Do you have lots of debt? If so, the cash now may be better used to pay off some debts. That's something to look at. Do you have another source of income? If so, a burr may be good. If not, you may need the money from the fix and flip to actually pay the bills. Um, are you in a high tax bracket? If you have another job, you're making a bunch of money, you may want to do a burr to help offset some of those taxes while investing, but not paying a whole bunch of money to the tax man. You see, that $40,000 you would have made and paid income tax on, you could leave that in the property in a burr type situation and not pay any taxes on that and pay taxes, obviously, on the money you receive for rents. Something to consider based upon your personal situation. Let's talk about the numbers. Not all properties are good rental properties. You need to look at what's called your NOI, your net operating income, okay? Your net operating income is you take your annualized rents, how much do you make in rents, and you subtract out expenses without a loan. So this is basically what are you spending for water, sewer, garbage, you know, those types of things, whatever you're paying for, what are your expenses, not including a loan, your taxes, your insurance, your repairs. Then you divide that by the amount you bought the property plus the rehab. How much are you into this property um, is what you divide that by. The purchase, the title, the lender fees, those things. Once you do that, it's going to give you a percentage. The higher the percentage, the better. The lower the percentage percentage the worse. Uh, the net operating income is basically comparing apples to apples. You look at one property and you say, if you take the loan out of the equation, how much is it returning if I had the property free and clear without any loans? Um, let's talk a little bit about the numbers here. Uh, that What will give you a percentage of basically what return you would get if the property is paid off? The higher, the better. We talked about that. Net operating income is basically what type of return you get from your money. What return are you getting on your cash? This does not take into consideration tax benefits, appreciation, or any of those types of things. Um, let's touch on the property just for a minute. In the property is rentals are best in good school districts. For me, I like four bedroom, two bathrooms, and a two carport or car garage to make a rental. So if I was dealing with a two bedroom, one bathroom condo, I wouldn't want to turn that into a rental. I would want to wholesale that or fix and flip that. If I was going to wholesale or fix and flip, I would look at what better return I would get. How much can I make wholesaling? How much can I make fix and flip? How long will it take me for both? And then I can make an informed decision on that. If not, I'd rather fix and flip it. So flipping is another job. And this is something people people get into um, where they forget about. So you're going to need flip properties and get quick turns for cash. Some properties are better from that than others. But if you don't build cash flow, you will always be working. And if your job is a janitor or a job is flipping properties, you're going to have to keep doing that until you have enough money to buy passive income. And as you have passive income, then you can say, I'm actually financial free because financial freedom doesn't come from flipping houses. Flipping houses can be part of your financial freedom strategy, but your financial freedom strategy also needs to include cash flowing investments. If you don't have cash flowing investments, continuing to do fix and flips is like just going to your job all the time. I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing fix and flips. You absolutely should. And you may want to continuing those, doing those even after the time you have cash flow because it brings big sums of cash to you. But you still have to do those to feed your family or to make money, whereas if you have cash flowing properties, and so it's really important. So make sure to keep some of the properties for yourself. You've got to build some cash flow. Um, I would 
flip a couple of properties and hold on to one. For every few properties I'd flip, I'd make sure that I bought one. It's a thing that you've got to just decide. It comes down to personal preferences as well. Cash flow. Cash flow takes time. It takes years. It takes decades before you see, start seeing the benefits. So you've got to be very careful and keep that into perspective. It takes a long time. I'll tell you just uh, this, this last couple of years, as I've been meeting with my wife and I, as we've been going through our, our rental properties and our cash flow from that, she's now saying, holy cow, this is a snowball rolling down the hill. I am so glad we did this. Where early on there was some hesitancy because it's really hard to do. Um, and that's why a lot of people are excited about it, but not a lot of people are actually doing it is it takes work. It really does. It takes work and it takes time for you to be able to get those cash flowing properties. And when you acquire it, you might not be making a lot of cash flow, but 10 years from now, you'll probably be making a significant amount of cash flow. I mean, my property's amount of rent that's gone up is considerable. And, it, and so you've got to start, you've got to start with it. Okay. This idea of flipping is another job. You're going to need to flip properties. Um, and you've got to get some quick cash. Some properties may be better for that. But if you don't buy cash full of properties, you will always be working. So make sure to keep some of those. In the end, should you do a burr or should you do a flip? Well, first thing I like to look at is look at the property. Is it a good rental property? Would it make a good rental property? Then what I look at is look at your personal situation. Do you need the money for expenses? Do you need the money for debts? Do you need the money for other things? Then I like to look at what's my tax bracket right now? Where am I sitting with that? Do I need a write-off if so, or do I not need additional cash? Uh, to, if so, let's look at doing a bird deal. What is the net operating income of the property? Or what would it be? Is it a good net operating income for the property? So what am I making? I like to see things around an 8% um, or greater. Um, that basically means I'm getting an 8% return on my money if the property is paid off. If so, and it is a good property, and I'm in a high tax bracket, then this, and it's good rental property, I probably should look at a burst. So these are questions to ask yourself every time as you're looking at a deal to make a determination, should I burr it or should I flip it? Okay, guys. I appreciate you being with us. Um, if you haven't found seen our Find Fun Flip system, check it out. Dozens of hours of training, deal finding software, access to our 100% financing. Go to dohardmoney.com backslash get started and check out our Find Fun Flip system. Sorry, got to grab a drink. Um, I think I may have missed a couple of questions here. Uh, Anthony says passive. Oh, I missed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I missed a few. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Anthony, I meant pre-approved before. Yep, pre get pre-approved. You just uh, you'd just answer my question. Yep, you got it. Uh, Nam from Virginia, appreciate you being with us. Um, let's see here. Uh, Esquel, uh I, I hope I'm saying that West Valley. Is that West Valley, Utah? Interested to to know on that. Um, Anthony, passive income forever is very bueno. I agree. Burr is my cup of tea. I'm not scared of management, tenants, and maintenance. Pfft, burr them out, man. Let's make it happen. Uh, Maurice, and cash uh, and use cash to buy cash flowing properties. I totally agree. Uh, Maurice Smith saying we should do both depending on the situation of the property. That's exactly right, Maurice. Uh, so check us out, uh, dohardmoney.com backslash get started if you haven't checked out our Find Fun Flip system. Also, if you guys haven't seen this yet, download it. It's absolutely free. Uh, it's my gift to you. It's called our Motivated Seller Checklist or Motivated Seller Sheet. Uh, just go to dohardmoney.com backslash motivated-seller-sheet. Um, check it out. It's something when you take phone calls, when you talk to customers, or when you talk to prospective people that want to sell their house, what to do, what to say. It's a sheet you can use. It's fantastic. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. If you, if you enjoyed today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, turn on the bell to do hard money on YouTube. Leave a comment. It really helps us out a ton and tell somebody else about it. There's nothing better than finding financial friends, other people that have the same beliefs as you in the same way and the same goals. And then you can talk to them. Hey, what'd you think about this? Well, how can we do that? Uh, the other thing I'd really like to know is what are you interested in for future live casts? Please type it in the comments. 
Do you want to know more about Business Partner Deep Dive or determining repair costs or coronavirus investing or wholesaling remotely or choosing a good contractor, virtual wholesaling, finding cash buyers, seller financing, contractor bids, determining rental prices, uh, preparing for cash flow, reverse wholesaling, finding cash buyers, negotiating at the kitchen table, income properties, sales skills, closing a deal, who are all the players, auction properties, subject to deals, determining repair amounts, buying properties remotely, make offers without seeing properties or something else. What would you like to know about? Please put that in the comments now. Um, it could be really, we'll, we'll build training and future trainings around that. Uh, let's see, we should do both. Anthony, I guess I, a little of both. I would say flip, flip, burr ratio, two to one or three to one, depending on the market. Totally agree. It's also really gonna depend on the property. It's gonna depend on that property as well. Uh, but I like it, Anthony. Uh, Rodrigo, great training. Fantastic, Rodrigo. Where are you investing? I don't think I saw you post that here. I'd be very interested to know where you're investing. Uh, if you enjoy these and you like what you heard today, please share the link um, on YouTube. Also, tell your friends and family and listen yourself to Income Hacker Podcast. If I have any Income Hacker listeners, please um Put it in the comments. I like to know. Um, also, don't forget that motivated seller checklist. Do hard money backslash motivated dash seller dash sheet um, so that you can check that out. Rodrigo is interested in auction properties. Okay, I'll, I'll mark that down, Rodrigo. Um, if you're listening to Income Hacker Podcast, please let me know. I'd be very interested. Okay, swag. Let's talk about it. Anthony won our swag of the week last week and he's with us here today um, best comments interaction um, so he won our swag of the week our winner for this week that's going to be getting all this that we talked about the hat to everything else um, the bo water bottle we went through the whole thing earlier our winner for this week is drum roll is everybody excited Trina Britton is our winner Trina if you're with us today please say hello in our chat um, otherwise um, what you need to do to get this, to claim it, uh, email support at dohardmoney.com. Uh, in the subject line, put swag winner. Put in your screen name. Put in the mailing address, your cell phone number. Do these things, and we will send out your free swag. So make sure you get it. Um, let's see here. Rodrigo wants to know more about auction properties. Uh, Rodrigo is in Baltimore, Maryland. Awesome. Marie Smith wants to know more about seller financing. Fantastic. We'll get that down. Anthony, uh, I agree. I truly enjoy the training and your podcast income hacker, Anthony. Thanks, man. Appreciate you being with us, being part of the team, being a member. Uh, congrats to Trina. Yep, absolutely, Trina. Uh, Carla says congratulations um, going to Trina as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Rodrigo, congratulations. Really appreciate it, guys. Um, join us next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Same time, same place. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. Make it a very profitable day. Go out and use some of the things we talked about today 